Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for CBN Newswatch. My colleague Ephraim Graham is on assignment. I am George Thomas. We begin overseas, where pressure continues to build for a solution to the North Korean crisis. My colleague Dale Hurd explains. With Kim Jong-un's continued nuclear threats against its neighbors and the U.S., a major Pacific ally has all but endorsed a military strike if necessary to stop him. Speaking at the Association of Asian Nations Summit in the Philippines, Japan's defense minister said North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile capabilities have grown to an unprecedented, critical and eminent level that could compel Japan to endorse possible military action. On his way to the conference, Defense Secretary James Mattis said the major nations in the region all agree the Korean Peninsula must be free of nuclear weapons. There's only one country with nuclear weapons on the Korean Peninsula. The UN Security Council's unanimous resolutions give a pretty good idea of how the international community looks at it. Secretary Mattis did not mention military action at the conference, but instead focused on diplomatic pressure. President Trump has said the U.S. will resolve the North Korean problem alone if necessary to prevent Pyongyang from gaining the capability to attack the United States with a nuclear missile. But when he heads to Beijing next month, the president will pressure the Chinese to make good on their vow to tighten the screws on North Korea. China is North Korea's only major ally and accounts for more than 90 percent of North Korean trade. The White House has said China needs to do more. North Korea is a threat to the West in more ways than one. The website MarketWatch reports that North Korean hackers can launch anonymous cyber attacks from various different countries without the risk of retaliation. It says North Korea is now capable of stealing hundreds of millions of dollars a year from just one type of online attack alone. And they can attack digital banks and have even hacked the South Korean Bitcoin exchange, stealing almost a million dollars of the cyber currency. The author claims North Korea's potential to create mayhem on the Internet is almost limitless. And right now, there's not much anyone can do to stop it. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Thanks, Dale. Nearly three weeks after a deadly attack killed four American soldiers in the West African nation of Niger, top U.S. military investigators suspect they were set up by Islamic terrorists. The four U.S. soldiers were on a reconnaissance mission when they were ambushed by 50 ISIS militants. Investigators believe the terrorists were tipped off just before the group of American Green Berets were to meet local lead, uh, elders of a village. Some have questioned whether the soldiers should have taken on such a dangerous mission without adequate support. A top U.S. general shot back at those criticisms. Taking risk. We have sent them there to operate in areas uh, within which there are extremist elements that if we weren't conducting operations. Our judgment is that they would plant, be at the capability to plan and conduct operations against the homeland, the American people, or our allies. By the way, some 800 U.S. forces are currently operating in West Africa on a mission to defeat ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Boko Haram terror groups. The latest conflict in the Middle East involves two U.S. allies pitted against each other. It's happening in northern Iraq, where Iraqi forces worked together with Shiite militias backed by Iran to drive the Kurds out of the oil-rich town of Kirkuk. As Chris, Mitch Chris Mitchell explains, the move represents a major blow to Kurdish regional government, a setback for U.S. interests in the region, and a boost for Iran's goal to dominate the Middle East. After the fall of Kirkuk, thousands of Kurds demonstrated outside the U.S. consulate in Erbil. They protested the lack of U.S. response to the Iraqi army and Shiite militia's military campaign against the Kurdish government. It's an astonishing coup in a certain sense uh, by the Iraqi government, supported by the Iranians, a very major blow to the Kurds. Uh, we're not quite sure where this will end, but certainly right now the Kurds are in uh, retreat. Middle East analyst Jonathan Spire explained Iran is the power behind the military campaign of the past several days. The Iranian role was very prominent and uh, openly declared. That is to say, the leader of the Quds Force of the Revolutionary Guards Corps, General Qasim Soleimani, was in Kirkuk in the days preceding the uh, military, Iraqi and Iranian military move. Before the offensive, 
Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told CBN News, Iran's goal is to build a Shiite Muslim arc of power in the Middle East. What they want, you know, from, from Tehran to Tartus, you know, from Iran to the Mediterranean, they want this Shiite arc to colonize it and control it. And, uh, uh, and everyone's concerned. Get this, they're trying to import Shiite militias that are now trying to choke the Kurds in Kirkuk. Because of the close partnership with Iraqi forces and Shiite militias, those militias used U.S. weapons for the offensive against Kirkuk. And we saw a situation in which the Shia militias were operating the state-of-the-art Abrams tanks, the best tank, U.S.-made tanks in the world, uh, against Kurdish forces who had nothing like the same level of anti-tank capacity. I think from the point of view of the U.S. taxpayer, I wonder how the U.S. taxpayer would feel to know that you know, his or her hard-earned uh, dollars have basically gone towards equipping a uh, fervently anti-Western Shia Islamist militia force. The Kurds proved the U.S.'s best ally in the war against ISIS. During the recent referendum for Kurdish independence, retired U.S. General Jay Garner told CBN News how the Kurds can be a vital U.S. ally against Iranian expansion. Strategically, this is one of the best locations in this part of the Middle East for us to have an ally and we could have a strong U.S. ally. That's why the Iranians are against us. They don't want a strong U.S. ally on their border, which is what the Kurds are. It would be like a carrier, a carrier stationed in this part of the Middle East, a U.S. carrier. One of the few countries to stand with the Kurds has been Israel. CBN News has learned Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been calling world leaders to stand with the Kurds. And Israel's intelligence minister said, the Kurds must be protected from extermination. Some experts believe how the U.S., the world's only superpower, responds in the next few days and weeks may well determine the future of the Kurdish people. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. President Trump is planning to uh, lunch with GOP senators in an effort to get tax legislation passed into law this year. This comes after the president had major conflicts with Senators John McCain, Bob Corker, and Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Last week, the president had a, a joint news conference to announce they had smoothed things over. Now the plan is to work together in an effort to overhaul the tax code. The issue of a baker who wouldn't make a cake for a gay marriage celebration is likely to be the biggest religious rights case in the Supreme Court term. Those who oppose Jack Phillips accuse him of discrimination against gays. But as Paul Strand reports, a group that has suffered discrimination in America for centuries is coming out to back Phillips. Some folks say when Colorado baker Jack Phillips refused to bake a cake to celebrate a gay wedding, that was the same as segregationists in the South refusing to serve blacks at lunch counters. But others say there's a whole different side to the story. We gather in support of Jack this Phillips. group of civil rights leaders has come together to insist that Jack Phillips' refusal as a Christian to support gay marriage isn't even close to the kind of discrimination shown against African Americans in the past. They've launched a website, wegotyourbackjack.com. Janet Boynes lived as a lesbian for 14 years, but came out of that lifestyle. I am very concerned that the LGBT activists have hijacked the civil rights movement for African Americans. The civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s was a movement to secure for African Americans the basic privileges and the right of U.S. citizenship that whites and others already had. Homosexuals, on the other hand, have always had the rights. They continue, however, to demand special rights based on their sexual behavior. This is based on a sin and a faith uh, issue. These folks point out the real discrimination here isn't against the gays, but the religious believers. A person, according to our faith, should not be compelled to take part in what they believe is a sin. If you don't allow a person to live by his conscience, you discriminate against the Christian. Not only are they coming against him, but they're coming against the uh, Constitution of these United States of America. And Henderson warns that limiting someone's freedom of religion goes against America's principles. When we start to infringe, infringe upon another person's rights, then we have taken away the freedom that America offers. Sexual behavior is not the same as skin color. I could change from gay to straight, but I cannot change the color of my skin. It is an immutable, unchangeable characteristic. I resent 
having my race compared to what other people do in bed. Paul Strand, CBN News, the Supreme Court. Thanks, Paul. A Christian magistrate or judge in England has lost his case to be rehired after he was fired from his job for comments he made on same-sex adoption. Richard Page filed a discrimination claim with the National Health Service. The former magistrate disagreed with placing a child for adoption with same-sex parents, writing, quote, My responsibility as a magistrate, as I saw it, was to do what I considered best for the child. He made that comment in a BBC interview. Page says the, he plans to appeal the court ruling. Coming up, shocking revelations about diet sodas. Not only do they make you gain weight, just drinking one a day triples your risk for dementia and strokes. And welcome back to CBN News. If you drink or eat anything with artificial sweeteners, you need to listen to our next report. You know, we have warned you about the dangers of these fake sugars for years. And now, as my colleague Laurie Johnson explains, they not only can hurt your brain and heart, they might even cause you to gain weight. This country's weight problem is only getting worse. The CDC reports a staggering 71% of adults qualifies as overweight or obese. The result? Things like heart disease, cancer, diabetes. In June, the New England Journal of Medicine reported the whole world is getting fatter and paying a price. Four million deaths, 60% caused by obesity, but the other 40% by just being overweight. Health experts say the root cause of our weight problem can be summed up in one word, sugar. Most Americans consume about 160 pounds of it a year. Oftentimes, it's hidden in foods you'd never expect, like yogurt, peanut butter, pasta sauce, and bread. Then other times, it's right out front, like in soda. This one can contains more than nine teaspoons of sugar. It's no wonder so many people turn to diet sodas containing zero-calorie artificial sweeteners to reduce their sugar intake. But that's a bad choice for a number of reasons. A new Boston University study revealed people who drank diet soda have three times the risk of developing dementia and having a stroke. And that's people who just drink one a day. So artificial sweeteners, we think, are much worse than we ever thought. The Cleveland Clinic's Dr. Michael Roizen says artificial sweeteners like aspartame, saccharin, and sucralose can disrupt what's known as our microbiome. Your microbiome is the bacteria inside your gut. Those artificial sweeteners cause a separate breed of bacteria to grow inside you. Neurologist David Perlmutter says artificial sweeteners throw off the delicate balance of good and bad bacteria. The bacteria that live within our gut nurture the brain when they're treated right. They reduce inflammation. For example, inflammation is the key player that causes multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, and even Alzheimer's, and coronary artery disease, and diabetes for that matter. As well. Perlmutter says in addition to avoiding artificial sweeteners, consider taking probiotics to increase good bacteria and prebiotics to maintain healthy levels. We consume artificial sweeteners to control our weight, but believe it or not, a number of scientific studies show they actually cause us to gain weight. One reason goes right back to the gut. The body thinks it's starving and holds on to every calorie that a person consumes. So here are people consuming diet drinks and gaining weight. And that doesn't seem to make any sense. And yet, we now see those, uh, that it's happening uh, because of changes in the gut bacteria. The risk of developing diabetes is dramatically increased twofold in people who drink a lot of sugarless beverages. Who knew? Nutritionist J.J. Virgin says the artificial sweeteners stevia, xylitol, erythritol, and monk fruit appear to be better choices for the gut. However, they can still lead to weight gain. But there's also a phenomenon that happens called calorie dysregulation that they saw with artificial sweeteners. When you eat, a, eat something that's got a sweet taste with no calories, your body can't calibrate the degree of sweetness with how many calories, so it causes you to tend to overeat. Then there's our own DNA. 
Genetics predispose an estimated three-fourths of us to have an addiction to sweets, meaning the more we take in artificial sweeteners, the more we crave all sweets. That's why health experts recommend removing the taste for sweets altogether. Sweet is a learned taste. If you go off sweet, if you go off sugar, if your brain doesn't get used to it, if your taste buds don't get used to it, you can avoid it and that's a much healthier state. Virgin proved this theory with 700 sugar addicts. First we taper down for a week. We don't cook cold turkey, but then we lower their sugar impact down. We start using more spices and more savory and getting enough protein in and getting healthy fats in. And then at the end of two weeks, we go back and test. And these sugar addicts told me that sweet food just tasted gross. So while eating too much sugar is definitely hazardous, Artificial sweeteners can be just as bad for you, maybe worse. That's why the healthiest solution is to remove all sweets from your diet, both real and fake. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Up next, hope and healing. See how Christians are bringing the good news to Texas after hurricanes swept through the state. Fear and unrest is rocking the country of Myanmar, also known as Burma, as waves of Rohingya Muslims are fleeing ethnic cleansing. But CBN Humanitarian and Disaster Relief is offering some much-needed help and prayer. Tens of thousands of Muslims are finding refuge in a town between the border of Bangladesh and Myanmar. There are some 50,000 refugees in just one camp. The mothers and infants are in desperate need of help, and CBN is providing food infant formula and diapers for more than 400 mothers and infants. The captain of the Bangladeshi army commends CBN on supplying the relief that was most needed. You know, when the world seems to be at its darkest, the light of the gospel shines the brightest. That's certainly the case for the people of Texas. Just two months ago, Hurricane Harvey ripped through the Lone Star State, tearing apart families and homes. But this week, more than 9,000 Texans experienced hope and healing at Franklin Graham's Decision Texas tour. Emily Jones brings us that story. God sent his son Jesus Christ to this earth on a rescue mission. He hung on that cross and he took our place. It's a message that brought thousands to tears. If you're not sure that you have repented and told God that you're sorry, this is the time to do it and to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the promise is you shall be saved. Diana believed Rudy. that promise. I wanted to be able to start all over. And, and then it was like, I need to get up there. And I feel like a huge burden was lifted. It's just like you said, uh, first it was tears of uh, desperation and sadness and then tears of joy. Mikkel says she got a new family that night. I've never been in front of a big crowd that loves God that much. I know God is going to come with me, and no matter what I do, he'll always be there. So when the fireworks were going off, I started thinking about, like, what I was going to do with my life, and, like, God's doing this, God's making my life happy, better, and I'll be part of his family. This Decision Texas tour may be over, but the message Graham brought lives on. We're willing to put our faith and trust in him. Tonight he'll forgive you and he'll cleanse you and he'll heal you. He will hear your prayer tonight. He'll forgive you if you're willing to call on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Wow, incredible uh, devastation. Good, good to see Franklin Graham and uh, the team there ministering to the folks in Texas. Well, folks, we will be back right after this. Um, and welcome back. Actor and producer Kirk Cameron puts a national spotlight on faith when a night of prayer and worship in Washington, D.C. Revive Us 2 airs live tonight in theaters across the country. CBN's Jenna Browder sat down with Cameron about what's in store. One year ago at Revive Us, over 150,000 believers gathered in theaters across America for a national family meeting. And now Kirk Cameron is back for more. We prayed, we worshiped, we put our faith into action, and something remarkable happened. 
ready to shine a light on faith in the nation's capital. So here we are a year later, it's Revive Us 2, and we're meeting because uh, it seems that our nation is very divided. We hear it all the time. We're being divided about race, about religion, about politics, um, about gender, about choice. Uh, we have so many things causing anxiety like hurricanes and wildfires and uh, tragedies in Las Vegas. We need a path to unity. It's happening here at the brand new Museum of the Bible, but you don't have to be here to participate. That's right. So think of it as a giant revival meeting. In, in, you know, they used to have revival meetings in a big white tent somewhere and the community would come. Well, think of this as 800 tents, but they're movie theaters, all connected through satellite. And just like last year, he's teaming up Join with big names like Ben Carson, Carson Ravi Zacharias, and the team behind Fireproof and War Room. There's been a shift in our culture. A fresh momentum is building. You say an awakening is happening in our country. What do you mean by that? Well, when the negative narrative floods our news feeds that says we're divided, we're arguing, we're fighting, we're, we're so politicized that we can't move forward, there has been a massive shift in our culture recently. I feel a fresh momentum that's building and an awakening of people who are saying, I can see that what we're trying to do is not working in our country. It's not moving in the direction that we'd hope. And so, let's lean into our faith. Let's love God with all of our heart. Cameron says the whole idea for this came to him in the form of an open door. In my walk with God, I've found that whenever I seek to honor God and be a blessing to other people, if that intersects with uh, my acting career or an ability to make a live event or a movie like Revive Us, I wanna be all in and I do it with all my heart. And it's that passion he hopes will spread to audiences across the country. It's time for a better and higher perspective. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. And for a link to the theaters and show showtimes, you can go to cbnnews.com. Well, folks, that is it for now on CBN News Watch. Have a great day. See you, everyone.